So today we're uh, visiting with Grant Brown and Grant, tell us about what you do. And I just, you have started uh, Happy Eco News and we are just, we love what, what you're putting out there. And tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are with Happy Eco sure. News. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I really like what you guys are doing. And so um, I really appreciate being on the podcast. So Happy Eco News started, um, I guess, about two and a half years ago. I took my kids uh, out of school. My wife had just finished uh, a long stint with a career, and we decided to travel the world. And uh, so we went to, I think in 2017 and 2018, we traveled to 20 countries on four continents in about 35 cities. That's just amazing. an amazing trip. Wow. Um, but what we found was that there was a... Um, everywhere you looked in a lot of these developing nations where we were visiting, even, even in some of the bigger cities that are, you know, Western European type countries, um, we would find that there, there were uh, constantly an affront to our senses in terms of pollution. And uh, it just kind of got to me, you know, I, I have a photo of my son. He hopped up on a surfboard for the first time in Bali and uh, there's a big piece of plastic film on his leg, mm. um, you know, stuck to him. Uh, in fact, on the beaches in Bali, it's one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. There were, uh, I, I would say there's not literally not a square foot of beach that didn't have a piece of plastic on it in some way. Oh. So, you know, it became kind of disheartening and um, kind of got beaten down by that. And everywhere you look, right? Uh, in Cambodia, a, a river uh, that I thought was a garbage dump until the rains came. The rains came, washed it all away. Oh, there's a river there. Oh, wow. uh, all of that got flushed out to the Mekong River which then got flushed out to the South China Sea and is washing up on a beach somewhere near you. So, um, you know, it was a bit disheartening, uh, all these beautiful, beautiful places with these wonderful people that were super generous and kind. Uh, and everywhere we went, we, we met wonderful people. Um, and, you know, I just thought there's got to be something better. Now, I work in my day job is in clean technology. And I have traveled extensively for work. I've done some pretty incredible things. I spoke at the, uh, the UN Climate Conference at COP21. I've met world leaders. Uh, I, you know, I've had a, a very privileged, amazing career. And what I found was that um, there are, what I know from my heart and from my experience is that there's a lot of really good people doing really good things. And it's just not being represented in the media. Mm -hmm. It is if you look. But unfortunately, really dig. <laughs> you have to dig. And so I started looking for these things only to, you know, sort of uh, make myself feel better about what was going on in the world. I thought, gosh, there's got to be something there that is good for everybody. So I started collecting these stories and I started sharing them on my social media feeds. And then I thought, well, you know, I need to have one central location to let I can do this. And so I started, uh, I, I started a little website, you know, in its early days, it looked terrible. Um, I got a domain name and I, I eventually dropped that and I used something else. And now it's called the happy eco news.com. And, you know, the logo is a, a smiling, happy face over superimposed on, on the globe. Um, and I think that people need that message. They need to know that there is something positive in the world happening right now. Everywhere you look, there's, uh, I mean, just socially, there's horrible things happening, uh, huge inequities in, 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 um, in wealth. Um, the people that are sort of the most vulnerable are, are being hurt the most by um, the actions of some of the most wealthy people. And what I've decided, what I decided at the time was that I was going to use this as a platform to help people overcome eco-anxiety first, and secondly, to hopefully inspire them to make positive change. I am a firm believer that small incremental change can add up to really, really big effects globally. Mm -hmm. We have, I think, what, 8 billion people on the planet. If everybody did their part, we wouldn't really have a problem. Um, there's a certain impact just from having that many people on the planet. We are, you know, we, we, we consume, um, but we don't have to, we don't have to waste. Uh, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to um, throw that garbage in the river so that it washes out to the sea. We, we, there's a lot of things we can do. So, you know, uh, that's kind of a long way of, of saying that I just wanted to make people feel better, uh, you know, and, and my payback on this, like I, I'm not making any money from it right now. 
Um, but my payback on this is simply getting these amazing emails from people who are saying things to me like, you know, I stopped watching regular news media. I stopped reading Reuters news. I stopped reading, you know, whatever, because it was just too depressing. And now I get all of my news from Happy Eco News. Now, Wonderful. That, that's, that's a huge, huge responsibility. Um, <laughs> yes. And, you know, and I didn't ask for that, but maybe I did. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm proud to, you know, every, every time I publish something new and I, I think my writing is getting a little better each week. And, um, you know, it's, it's just been a fun, fun process for me and personal gratification there. Um, but it's just amazing to know that so many people uh, from all corners of the world are, are being influenced by it and, and finding something from it. Congratulations. I'm such Thank a you. fan of how. Yes, I can. Uh, there's a little bit of a glitch there. Yeah, yeah. a little, little glitch on Zoom that they just told me about. Anyways, um, I came across your website just randomly Googling. And first of all, the logo made me super happy. So wait <laughs> <that. Okay. laughs> <Second of> all, <laughs> to validate just something that you said really quickly about how you feel like that first version was terrible. Yeah. And I can tell you that that means you were doing your job and just getting it out there because we were working with someone. We're, um, we're not going to give anything away, but we're working on a fun project. And he said, uh, developing it. And the developer was saying, if you're not slightly embarrassed of your first version, yeah. you waited too long. And I yeah. remember go back, you know, back in the day with, our Instagram and oh, gosh, what are we doing? <laughs> but that's the point. Like you just, doesn't matter. Like just get it out there and start yeah. sharing. And I think that first of all, is one of the most important things that you can do. It's just, yeah, well, you got to get it out there. And you know, I, I, I've, um, I've always been a fan. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I'm a part owner of the company that I work for. Um, and I've, I've, uh, learned a lot and that is, you know, that the version one is never, the final version mm -hmm. and uh there's a an old adage that I, and I don't know i think it was a military uh reference but basically no no plan survives first contact with the enemy um and i think that can be adapted to no plan survives first contact with the customer or the audience yeah. mm -hmm. and uh once you start getting that feedback you kind of go okay well now it needs to be revised uh my instagram it's horrible i <laughs> I really uh, am thankful that there are people like you that are helping me with this because, you know, it's, um, I'm a one man show. Uh, I, I'm actually in the process of uh, hiring a social media manager and, uh, and somebody else to help me with the content management uh, because I think this thing does have uh, some potential uh, for growth. Um, but uh, I, um, you know, it, it, it you can only learn by doing it, in my opinion. And it, otherwise, you know, we'd just all be sitting at home uh, thinking about it and, and planning for it, but never actually taking action. And, and you know, that translates into um, taking positive environmental action as well. Yes. You know, um, be perfect. you can't be perfect. We, we can't be. We are not set up in a society that allows us to be perfect in terms of environmental impact. You know, I, I envision someday there'll be maybe some form of a, um, a circular economy where things don't go to waste, where the idea, the notion of throwing something away after it's broken um, is foreign to us, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all we can do is, is do what we can um, to make things better one person, one action at a time. And it feels good. You know, you don't have yeah. to you don't have to um, worry about it. You don't have to, you know, uh, ruminate over it, as, as some people say. Y you can just take a small action and then go, wow, that's, that felt good. And then you take another action and then another action and another action. And all of a sudden, you realize that you're actually doing something that is positive and you are making a small incremental change. Um, and, 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 and then the other thing about that is that people will start to see that they go, okay, well, you know, you, you're, you, Hey, I'm recycling all. So for one thing is here, for here in British Columbia, uh, we can't recycle plastic film that has that foil lining. So basically chip bags, yeah. um, or, you know, like what that type of thing. Um, it's supposedly impossible to recycle here. Okay. Well, that's fine. So my wife actually found a company that will send us a box. It's a, like a big cardboard box, uh, postage paid, and you send it back to them and they recycle it at their facility in Montreal. That's Now, awesome. it's awesome, right? It doesn't cost that much. We only use it 
we fill it up once every, we don't buy a lot of that type of food anyway, but um, we fill it up once every four or five months and then we send it back. And, you know, that's a little positive thing. My kids go, ah, oh, dad, what the hell? You know, <laughs> I just want to throw it in the garbage. And no. I'm here, I'm in there, I'm, I'm fishing it out of the garbage. And I say, look, you little, uh, I'm the cranky old man now, but um, I'm leading by example. I, I have high expectations for my children. I have high expectations for my community. I have high expectations for my politicians. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm completely crazy. Uh, but if we just, uh, accept with the way things are, nothing will ever change. Yeah, I it agree. Won't. I agree. And I also was chatting with a, a college friend who's now on the marketing side of climate change. And we were having some really cool conversations. He, you will actually hear him on the podcast too, but oh, okay, great. Um, one of the yeah. cool things that we were talking about off air that really relates to what you were saying. In my opinion, those small changes also lead to personal identity changes. Yes. So a lot of people don't necessarily identify as being stewards of the environment or environmentalists. I mean, that seems yeah. like, oh no, just for the scientists or people cleaning up the beaches. But but in my opinion, it's those small, those small personal changes. When you decide that you're going to start recycling or you decide you're going to start composting or growing your own veggies, those small little habits yeah. eventually become, oh, I'm actually like an environmentalist or I'm a steward of the environment or however you want to call it. <laughs> I, have, I have a funny anecdote about that. I have a family member who uh, is a uh, longtime oil guy uh, and uh, he's you know, a great guy. Uh, you know, real, real fun person to be around, great sense of humor. Um, but, you know, he made his career in the oil patch and mm -hmm. that's his identity. And I, I noticed that he was recycling. And I said, hey, that, you're an environmentalist. <laughs> and he took really great front it. at that. And I said, well, so if you're not, why are you recycling? He goes, yeah. well, why would I throw that in the garbage when it could be, be reused? And I said, well, that's a small form of environmentalism. You don't like it. Because you're, you've been, you don't want to be identified as that, and you identify as something else. But you're, you're making small changes in your own life that are actually helping other, helping other people and helping the planet. Um, and I think that there's an important thing there that I've been thinking about lately, and I'm, I'm, I tend to write about it soon. But it seems to me that we are as concerned about the environment. We've been fractured. Um, we don't have a unified voice and I'm not advocating for any kind of a huge association of environmentalists, although that might be uh, a good way to do it. But it just seems to me that we have had this massive media machine uh, port that's, that's well-funded, that is uh, in the pocket of big business that, you know, only cares about their shareholder profits in terms of cash. Um, and this, this machine has basically um, portrayed environmentalism or the idea that we should protect and nurture the earth as something fringe, as something that is um, less than. It's something that makes us kind of crazy, kind of weird, kind of wearing hemp, kind of hugging a tree or climbing yeah. up a tree and living in the forest or, or living off the we land or something granola. like that. <laughs> granola, yeah, exactly. Hey, I like granola. I like granola and yogurt with some berries on it. That's my stuff. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, um, I think that as the as this movement and i believe it is a movement uh, uh um gains momentum i think that we're going to start seeing more and more people that are you know successful in business that are intellects that are uh highly educated that are average people that are just working at the local garage that are um they 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 will start to identify more with this movement and they all start to realize that, you know what, it's not just a fringe thing. It's, 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 about, it's, it's about survival of the planet. It's about uh, survival as a species. You know, we don't have a lot of time left. And I also believe that human nature is kind of one of these, you know, like we procrastinate. I'm yeah. the worst. Uh, I, I would say that I probably have a very strong predilection for ADD. Um, I have a ton of things going on in my head at all times. Even right now, I'm thinking about something else while I'm talking. Kind of crazy, I know. Uh, and I thought that everybody else did this, but 
<laughs> Apparently not. Um, You're special, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, but you know what's what what um, the the interesting thing about that is that there are uh, I, basically, in a nutshell, there are so many people like us that actually feel the same way that maybe they don't articulate it because their identity is wrapped up in I'm a car guy, I'm a this, I'm a that, I I I'm an oil guy, I'm whatever. And it doesn't have to be so black and white. There can be different shades of gray. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I Most love definitely. it. Or shades of green, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, you were alluding to some, wh where you see the, the environmental movement going. What, what trends are you do you oh boy yeah so you know i i because well, i've been doing this for about three and a half years and or two and a half years rather i i am um, i'm seeing some really interesting things heating up right now and um you know one of the biggest ones that i see is this kind of uh, movement towards um these banks and uh, investment bankers and, and investment companies um, divesting from fossil fuels or fa from the fossil fuel industry altogether. Nice. Didn't uh, I read you know, on your on eco uh, on your uh, website about Deutsche Bank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the latest one. So Deutsche Bank um, is one of the largest financiers of uh, of coal and gas and oil, um, and they're getting out of it. You know, even uh, companies like uh, BP, British Petroleum, one of the largest companies in the world. Um, certainly one of the largest oil companies in the world is an, publicly announced that they are actually divesting completely. Oh, wow. So they're moving away from oil. Wow. So, you know, well, let me like, recap. British petroleum is moving away from oil. Yeah. They're, they're, inve they're it's a, it's going to be a process. Yeah, um, yeah. Awesome. they've just, I think they just recently, uh, wrote down something like, I, I think it's something like $22 billion in, in assets that have devalued over the last couple of years, you know, that entire industry has been devaluing over lots of time. And, and, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I totally, I have a lot of family and a lot of friends that uh, work in that sector and I do not wish them ill at all. Um, uh, but I think that the writing is on the wall and, uh, you know, if you're listening, get out now. <laughs> get out. Um, but it's also transition. As you just said, it's a process. It I mean, is. Yeah. we're not going to go, you know, as you said, black and white overnight, you know, there has to be even as you move away from fossil fuels, that process in itself is in the grays. You have it to is. transition. It is. And we need to, you know, we can't have a massive unemployment in that sector as well. So right. all those people will need to be retrained and then uh, we need to find new projects for them to work at. So, you know, but I mean, that, that goes for for BP, it goes for all these different um, American companies. You know, there's a there's a company uh, in Denmark that I have worked with in the past. Um, from um, they're called Dong Energy. They were called Dong Energy, so it was Danish Oil and Natural Gas, and uh, they just recently changed their name to Orsted, and they've completely divested from oil and gas. Like they're not in it at all anymore. So there's a company that was multi-billion dollars in revenue that saw the writing on the wall and walked away from what was pretty much a profitable enterprise uh, just because they were f sort of trying to future proof their business. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of that. And I think those are, those are trends that are going to increase. Uh, you know, I don't know if um, these fossil fuel subsidies will go away or not. That seems to be a hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, without getting too political. Um, it seems to me that the idea of, of using taxpayer dollars to provide subsidies to, a, to an industry that is causing so much damage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how, how do you justify that, right? And so, so I think that will hasten the demise of these, um, these industries. I also believe that there will always be a place for some form of natural resource resource uh, use. Um, we have a plastics industry that's, you know, everywhere we look, it's ubiquitous. Everything that we touch practically is made out of plastic these days. Mm -hmm. I don't see that going away anytime soon, although there are really interesting trends in that way as well, which, um, you know, these um, uh, biofuels there are, um, 
uh, corn-based plastics and soy-based plastics, et cetera. So there's a lot of other interesting algae-based plastics. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of other ways for these companies to uh, still be successful and maintain their success without having to, you know, destroy the planet along that process. Uh, so that's one. Um, one of the other things that I find quite interesting, and it's kind of tied into that, is the rise of green energy. You know, we've seen in the last 10, 10 years, the um, solar in particular has just plummeted in terms of the cost of installation. You know, it's now cheaper to, to, to plan, commission, install, and run a solar plant than it is to simply maintain an existing coal plant. Oh, wow. So, you know, who's going to build a coal plant? Who's yeah. going to even want to maintain? There's coal plants that are being dismantled right now because the, the, um, the cost of solar is so low and it's clean. Once you build a solar plant, you never have to pay another dime because yeah. there's no moving parts, yeah. you know, very few. Um, you might have to clean the solar panels off and I think they've got a lifespan of around 20 years right now. So it's a long-term proposition. Um, so these things are, are, are happening. Um, you know, wind is now coming on in a big way. Uh, a lot of the barriers to entry there have been, have been being reduced as well. So as we build more, they become cheaper. And as they become cheaper, we build more. And so that's this amazing cycle of, 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 of uh, uh, cost reduction and scale um, that can only benefit that industry. Um, Already, you, you should, I, I, I look like your logo. I had the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> Well, that's great. I, mean, uh, I had to quit smiling at one point while you were talking because uh, my face was hurting. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's, this, that's, that's my this fuel. Not. That's my clean energy. That keeps me going. Thank you. <laughs> Superimpose my mom's face onto oh. your logo. Hey, that's great. Hey, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll do that like once a week or something like that. Yeah. Uh, the smile, the, the happy eco news smile of the day. That would be something. Grant, you nailed it. I think we're <laughs> yeah. on to something. Okay. Tell Sorry, us more good, good news and more trends. This is just fabulous. Yeah. And so then, you know, the other thing that really um, that comes to mind, and it's an ongoing thing, and um, it's more about social change. And, you know, what we're seeing is the rise of, um, of young people. And uh, I have two children that are uh, Gen Z, they're late teens. And um, they're inheriting a world that, you know, they're, they're not proud of, right? They're I'm resentful. I'm not proud of what I'm not my generation of. is handing off. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we're not, we haven't done a great job in preparing them for this. And I've had some people say to me, ah, it'll be fine. They're smart. They'll figure it out. What a cop out. You know, I mean, God, what are they thinking, right? Let's help these kids. They're our children. They're our grandchildren. They're our future. They're our planet's future. And they don't want to be, they're like an involuntary leader. Um, you know, so I'm thinking of people like, uh, of course, uh, Greta Thunberg. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a kid that has everything stacked against her. Um, and she's got the clarity of vision to see what needs to be done. And then she just did it. She just took action. And gosh, we just need more people like her. Um, another one that comes to mind is the, the young woman, uh, Jamie Margolin. Uh, I just actually picked up her book. I haven't, I haven't read it yet, um, but it's called Youth to Power. And um, there's a shift in power that's coming. And those young people are going to hold all the cards. I mean, right now, I read just recently, right now, as we, as we speak today, millennials, so not even the Zoomers of, of their age, but the millennials hold all the cards. Yeah, that's you. That's me. <laughs> so the millennials, the millennials have more voting power than any other group right now. God bless if millennials them. could get out and vote, yeah, if. They, <laughs> they could change everything. They yeah. could make it right. Um, but there's an apathy there that is, um, unfortunately, um, you know, it's not happening yet. Maybe this next election cycle will change all of that. Because quite frankly, you know, like I said, America is, you know, the greatest, if not the greatest, one of the greatest 
countries on the planet in terms of power and influence. Um, what happens there can certainly influence the entire world. And um, an economic engine like no other. I mean, it's, it's stunning. And um, if we could just get you know, American millennials to get out and vote, then, you know, they, things could change, but I don't want to get political. Um, <laughs> hey, again. get out and vote. Definitely That's, not political. That is not, that, that is, is a big, and in my, we were talking to someone else and asked, um, th this question might be coming your way later. So this is a little sneak peek, but we asked okay. this person, what do you think the most important thing that you can do on an individual level is to help reverse global warming and climate change? And that person said, vote, vote for representatives that care about these issues and will actually yeah. take action. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that's, that's certainly, um, Certainly, yeah, that, I, I, would, I would not disagree with that. I would also say that perhaps um, if you were asking me, which- right. I mean, We yeah. will, hold it, hold it. Because that's, <laughs> okay. that, that's the culminating <laughs> like Grant Brown nugget to yeah. leave everyone with. Okay, um, <laughs> you know, okay. So, um, so I think the rise of young people as leaders um, is, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I, you know, went to the big climate Friday for Future March here in Vancouver. Uh, you know, I was the oldest guy for miles around. And I saw it was almost emotional, the, the amount of energy and um, uh, hope for the future that these kids have, despite, you know, looking down the barrel of like a real scary, potentially future. Mm -hmm. I also, as I was saying, I, I think that, um, you know, humans are, um, we're procrastinators. You know, we wait to the last minute to do stuff, you know, like I didn't switch on my computer here until, you know, two minutes before the event. Um, and, 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 you know, I also believe in humanity and I believe in the power of our society and I believe in the power of people that, you know, one thing that traveling a lot has taught me is that everybody wants the same thing, right? They, they just want a better future for their children. They want clean food, they want clean water, they want clean air to breathe. Um, they want, you know, things to be better for their children than they were for them. And, you know, we've, we've had that. I, I'm the beneficiary of years, decades, thousands of years of human growth that has led to uh, an amazing world that we live in with technology that my grandparents couldn't even dream of. Yeah. You know, when I, my, I remember talking to my grandma and she said, yeah, you know, we didn't have indoor plumbing. Uh, I, my kids can't even imagine a life without a iPod. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, we will fix it. I, I truly believe we will fix it. We're not the type, we're not going to go quietly into the dark night. We're going to kick and scream. We're going to fight. We're going to make sure that, um, that our voices are heard and that we do make those changes. And I also believe uh, as an entrepreneur that business has a big role to play. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, there are, that one of the other growing trends is the rise of, of business to actually be a part of this because there are always, there's a part of human nature, I think, that wants to build great things. You know, we need people that want to build the big bridge or, or the, 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 the big skyscraper or whatever. Those are the types of people that I, I'm not necessarily one of them. I have had some small businesses and I've done okay. But um, if you can get some of these visionary type thinkers behind this idea and then you can give them the incentives that they can make a pile of money uh, doing the right thing as opposed to the wrong thing, um, they'll take that action. And they will make, do the right thing and they will make a, something great and the whole planet will benefit. Maybe it's carbon capture. Maybe it's uh, incentivizing uh, tree planting in some way. I, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like, but there will certainly be um, a lot of that in the very near term, I would say. And we can help by voting with our, our wallets. This is absolutely true. Yeah. So every purchase that you make, everything that you do um, can certainly help in that process. Yeah. yeah. And I also every action you take. Yes. And the concept of capitalism and environmentalism are not mutually exclusive. I That's feel true. like 
that gets brought up a lot. Like, oh, if you're, you know, wanting to do the green thing, you're going to lose money or you're not going to be profitable. And I just think, again, to use your words, it's such a cop out. <laughs> it is a cop out. And, you know, there's a um, lot of evidence to show that companies like uh, there's a big company called Unilever. Um, mm -hmm. And Unilever is, I think they have 150,000 employees and they, they, own they own brands like uh, Dove Soap and uh, other household names that they're bigger in Europe than they are in North America. But Unilever has had a history of doing the right thing for their employees, number one. So during the First World War, when all of the men in small villages around England, is where they started, uh, were going off to war um, and they couldn't work in the factories anymore, they said, okay, we're going to, you're doing, you, you are committing basically to, um, to give everything for this war effort. Um, so we're going to pay you and we're going to keep paying you. And just like you were at our factory, we're going to keep paying your income. And the idea was that when they came back, they would basically be able to slide back into their old jobs. And it's a societal sort of thought. Well, that company today is now doing the right thing. They, during the coronavirus, they took care of all of their staff and their employee, uh, their contractors by not canceling contracts, by not, they, they kept things going. And so there's a bit of a social conscience as well that comes into play. But by doing the right thing, they're creating this goodwill in their brands and then their, their corporation that will be rewarded by, like their sales are up. Their sales are up during coronavirus. Like, you know, these, these types of companies that are, it's in their corporate DNA to do the right thing are the ones that are going to come out of all of this uh, on top. Yeah. And also a little side note about Unilever, they add all the how to recycle labels on all of their products. I don't know if you've seen them, but here in the States, they're super necessary. And I think everywhere because recycling is so tricky and a lot of people just don't know what to do with their products. And they have those very clear labels. They'll say like rinse can and put lid back in or take plastic cap off and recycle. Yeah or whatever. I mean, that's just a small, another small step. And I am a geek with that stuff. And I literally look for those labels. And sure. if I see one, I'm like, Oh, perfect. I'll purchase this. So, so you'll purchase that. And then yeah. you won't purchase the other brand that doesn't. And eventually, if there's enough people like you, that will make an impact in the bottom exactly. line. And it's and so small, but it adds up in my it opinion. It does add up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Grant, I know you've given us so many awesome high level global nuggets. I want to bring it back to you as we start winding down because I know we don't want to keep <laughs> here all day because I could literally chat all yeah, day. Yeah, I could too. Uh, so could I. <laughs> um, how you personally, how has this Happy Eco News project and really you're the one diving deep into all of these news stories, how has it changed you as a person? not to put you on the spot, but from more personal well, level, all that positivity, happy eco news and all, all of, all of the above. Okay. So I went from being a cynic to an optimist. I think that's the way you could put it. Oh, good. I love that. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, you know, I, I find hope where perhaps I didn't find hope before. You know, I, I did this as a way to make myself feel better about the world and better about things. Um, and it's permeated out into all different walks of life in all corners of the world. Um, but me personally, you know, it's just been this really gratifying journey of, of understanding that, you know, yes, there's a ton of people on the planet trying to do the right thing. And, and um, despite having so many obstacles put in their way, are, are, are doing the right thing and are trying actively to make the world better, not just for them, not for personal gain, not for uh, profit or for anything else, although that's admirable in its own way. Um, but they're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And that really gives me a faith in humanity that I didn't have um before i think that i was losing actually in a way and and i you know when i talk to my kids and some of their friends they are in that same boat i say go read the happy good news kids and they're yes. like yeah <laughs> get lost old man um but you know it it's uh so yeah, i have hope and i have optimism for the future 
and I, and I truly believe that we are going to be okay. Uh, I think that there's going to be a period of adjustment and I think that there's going to be um, some discomfort, you know, and as North Americans, I think that's the one thing we fear more than anything is discomfort. Mm -hmm. So change is discomfort. Um, and, um, but the, al the alternative is so much more unpleasant than uh, a, a small amount of change now. It's interesting that you brought up the word hope because Marianne and I earlier uh, today we were talking. Uh, we were talking about you, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> more you, Grant. Yeah, and we were preparing and whatnot. And I said, I just love what he's doing because it it brings hope. And I said that. I've had some difficult times in my life and I was telling Mariana, my darkest times in my life is when I had no hope. And yeah. I feel as though e your uh, happy eco news, it gives hope. And well, thank you. Thank you for doing that because we, boy, do we need it. Yeah, I think we do. And I'm, I, I feel like, um, you know, I've been given this opportunity and um it's, it feels like a huge responsibility in a way, but I love doing it. And it's become the reason I get up in the morning. I, I love my day job. I love the company I work for and uh, we're doing great things as well. We're uh, actively decarbonizing the uh, heavy industrial segment. So um, maritime stuff, um, which is arguably one of the most dirty industries in the world, but we're making it cleaner. So I, you know, I get it. I get it from both sides. I, I, I am actually working to make the carbon go away in the maritime industry. Um, but then I'm also doing it in terms of uh, helping people's outlook uh, day to day through the happy Eco news. And so I feel very privileged. Thank you. Wonderful. And how does it feel to be in, be a journalist now? Pardon me? How does it feel to be a journalist now? Well, I, I don't know if I'm a journalist. I, uh, are, Grant. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I just spreading good news and, uh, and that's all. And, uh, it's just the right thing to do. So I, I, it doesn't feel any different than just being Grant Brown from, you know, five years ago, except maybe I have a bit more of a positive outlook on life. And, um, and I guess, you know, in some ways it gives me purpose. It's like a thing that I can, like I said, it's why I get up in the morning and, and I look and I check my Happy Eco News email first. <laughs> I and the, I, the, there, you have a recent photo on your website of the eagle that's gliding over the water. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Boy, does th that photo put a big smile on my face. So, yeah. I mean, just, and your stories do. Yeah. The, the, you're doing such an amazing job. Thank you. Oh, hey, mom, you want to hit them with your big question yes. before we ra wrap it up? <laughs> you already know. Uh -oh. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> so what do you think is the most important thing that each person can do to help reverse global warming and help climate change? Well, uh, as you alluded to before, certainly voting. Um, but I think that in terms of individual action, I... I would have to say, because I keep coming back to the, you know, the traditional oil industry as being, um, it's pretty bad for the planet, you know, and um, drive less, you know, um, consume less plastic, um, take action, right? Just take action. Take some form of action each day that you can be proud of and that you can point to if somebody asks and say, you know, I, I, I it's do so, do what's right for you. You know, do, do what, what, um, if it's planting a garden and it's eating less meat, if it's, you know, any one of these things, right? If it's not using uh, chemical herbicides or um, pesticides in your garden, if it's um, switching to an electric lawnmower, which I saw on your site, uh, on your Instagram feed, I actually have one as well. And I've been using it. I've actually had an electric lawnmower for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, and uh, all of those little things add up. So just take action. Take some form of simple action that feels right with you and then build upon that. Because it's, it sounds hard, 
but it's not hard. Once you start taking that first step, they, what do they say? A, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah. So that's what exactly. I would say. I love that. That just, A, speaks to the message that we try to portray, but also all a lot of the, the big conversations that we've been having with people recently. It seems like that is really resonating with everyone. You know, just do what's right for you. Do something. You're not going to be perfect, but start somewhere, right? It's really yeah. that easy. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know, um, recycling is not enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it re it reduce, reduce, reduce. Don't consume. Don't be a consumer. You know, this idea of us being referred to as consumers, we don't have to be. Yeah. Uh, a consumer, you know, that's, that's an industry lexicon for somebody who buys your crop and, uh, and throws it away. A consumer does not necessarily mean a human being. We're humans. We have a society. We should be looking out for each other and we should be looking out for the planet. You know, we're the only creatures on the planet that don't contribute, if that makes sense, you know, to its health. Everything else seems to live in um, harmony with the planet except humans. So it's so yeah. true. It's so and true. we can. And we can. We can. Yeah. We used yeah. to live in harmony with the earth. Well, we did. Yeah. 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 Grant. Thank you so much. I literally have all of these questions that I've written down as we were talking okay. and I don't have time to get to them today, but I'm really hoping you'll be back on this podcast. To share I would love to be back if you have really Eco good. News insights. And then I'm going to sneakily sprinkle in those questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Are you going to fact check me too? No, 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 no. Just <laughs> awesome things that you were there saying. There are no gotcha moments on There's this. There's no gotcha okay. moments. No, no, no. There's just lots of, you have amazing insights and you know, we didn't even touch on your day job, which I know you're changing the world that way too. So there's just so many things that you're doing. Thank you so much, obviously, for all your work. And tell us how people can help you, contribute, get in touch with you. What can people do? Sure. Well, share the Happy Eco News. So uh, visit my website. It's uh, happyeconews.com, just as it sounds. Um, and uh, I'm on Twitter and, um, you know, the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram in some small way. Um, but, uh, visit my website. There's a, a newsletter. So each week I, uh, curate the top five happy eco news stories. Um, and that's based upon actual page views. So it's not my perception of what I think is the top five. It's actually what people have clicked on the most. So when you go and visit a page on my site, um, that will get cataloged and, uh, I will, if it's the top five, it, you'll be in the top five. Um, and then share it, you know, share it with other people because everybody needs some happy eco news in their daily routine. Um, and, you know, share it, subscribe to the newsletter, um, just read it and be happy, right? I'm, I'm, I'm super positive and hopeful for the, for the coming years. And I'm a huge fan of your newsletter. I, doesn't it come out Monday morning? Like first Monday morning. I, I think, think the day. Th yes. The first time I, I, <laughs> read, I was like, I'm sure Grant was purposeful about this. But yeah, yeah. I, it makes me, well, it allows me uh, the weekend, right. To, to work on it. And then, um, I don't know. I like to get something positive in my news or my email feed. Uh, first thing Monday morning. Uh, certainly much better than, you know, a collection notice or something like that. <laughs> That's it. I know. It's the first thing I read now on Mondays and I love it. So everyone definitely sign up for their newsletter and all of those links will be in the show notes. Um, and then we also post, you know, highlights from Happy Eco News on our Instagram. Yes. So you can go. Thank to you. Yeah. Well, well, we love it. We love it. And you can go to their, to the Happy Eco News Instagram page through those stories as well. So I will post it all in the show notes though. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah. Grant, thank you. This is a great way to end our week. And then I'll start my next week with Happy Eco News too. So perfect. perfect. Sounds awesome. Well, thanks again for having me. I, I really love what you guys are doing. Um, I, I look forward to your updates as well. So uh, let's just work together and, and uh, see what we can do to help people, um, you know, make their lives better and make the planet better too. That I love it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Grant. We really appreciate your time. We do. Thanks. And have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Okay. Have a good one. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye.